In the midst of the church, he opened his mouth, and the Lord filled him with the spirit of wisdom and understanding, and clothed him in a robe of glory. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Today we celebrate the memorial of St. Bonaventure, Bishop and Doctor of the Church. You're probably not used to the recording equipment at this Mass, but uh, at the noon Mass we had some technical issues and there was no audio recorded from beginning until the end. And so uh, we decided to uh, stream and record this five o'clock Mass tonight. Uh, so that those who follow along on YouTube uh, later on in the evening uh, will have something that they can uh, participate in uh, that uh, has some sound. We pray. My brothers and sisters, let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Lord Jesus, you are mighty God and Prince of Peace. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Son of God and Son of Mary. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are Word made flesh and splendor of the Father. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that just as we celebrate the heavenly birthday of the Bishop St. Bonaventure, we may benefit from his great learning and constantly imitate the ardor of his charity. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. Thus says the Lord, Woe to Assyria, my rod in anger, my staff in wrath. Against an impious nation I send him, and against a people under my wrath I order him. To seize plunder, carry off loot, tread them down like the mud of the streets. But this is not what he intends, nor does he have this in mind. Rather, it is in his heart to destroy, to make an end of nations not a few. For he says, by my own power I have done it, and by my wisdom, for I am shrewd. I have moved the boundaries of peoples, their treasures I have pillaged, and like a giant, I have put down the enthroned. My hand has seized like a nest the riches of nations. As one takes eggs left alone, so I took in all the earth. No one fluttered a wing or opened a mouth or chirped. Will the ax boast against him who hews with it? Will the saw exalt itself above him who wields it? as if a rod could sway him who lifts it, or a staff him who is not wood. Therefore the Lord, the Lord of hosts, will send among his fat ones leanness, and instead of his glory there will be kindling like the kindling of fire. The word of the Lord. The Lord will not abandon his people. The Lord will not abandon his people. Your people, O Lord, they trample down. Your inheritance they afflict. Widow and stranger they slay. The fatherless they murder. The Lord will not abandon his people. And they say, the Lord sees not. The God of Jacob perceives not. Understand, you senseless ones among the people, and you fools, when will you be wise? The Lord will not abandon his people. 
Shall he who shaped the ear not hear, or he who formed the eye not see? Shall he who instructs nations not chastise, he who teaches men knowledge? The Lord will not abandon his people, for the Lord will not cast off his people, nor abandon his inheritance. But judgment shall again be with justice, and all the upright of heart shall follow it. The Lord will not abandon his people. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. At that time, Jesus exclaimed, I give praise to you, Father, Lord of heaven and earth, for although you have hidden these things from the wise and the learned, you have revealed them to the childlike. Yes, Father, such has been your gracious will. All things have been handed over to me by my Father. No one knows the Son except the Father, and no one knows the Father except the Son and anyone to whom the Son wishes to reveal him. The Gospel of the Lord. So I want to reflect a bit on our saint for today, Saint Bonaventure, who uh, was one of the towering figures of the Franciscan order. And in many ways, he served a similar role or fit in a similar way in the Franciscan order in the way that Thomas Aquinas did in the Dominican order. Thomas and Bonaventure were contemporaries uh, just as St. Dominic and St. Francis were contemporaries. So each lived respectively, you might say, in the kind of first couple of generations after the death of, of the founder of the order. And each is considered to be you know, the greatest uh, scholar that the orders, their respective orders, have ever produced. And indeed, Thomas and Bonaventure are two of the, the leading uh, thinkers, theologians, philosophers of the Middle Ages. Um, Bonaventure himself uh, was a professor, or a master, as they would call it, a master uh, at the University of Paris, uh, as Aquinas was, which of course at that time was considered without much doubt the preeminent university anywhere in the world. And, and Bonaventure taught there uh, for almost 20 years and was incredibly widely known for his scholarship, his lectures, um, his writings. He taught theology, he taught philosophy, he taught scripture. Um, and he was seemingly uh, in his niche. He was right in the place where he fit uh, perfectly well and where, where he was content, and as far as he could tell, he was serving the Lord uh, the way the Lord was asking. And then after about 19 or so years of doing this, 17 or 19, uh, the Franciscan order elected him um, their, their master of the order. They call it the minister general. Um, so to be in charge of the entire Franciscan order worldwide, and so he was, you might say, pulled out or ripped out of his university and teaching life and given a very, very different kind of life, that of an administrator, um, an organizer, a leader. And this was especially important for the Franciscans of the time because uh, the early decades of the Franciscan order after the death of Francis were were pretty rocky ones. You see, Francis was so incredibly charismatic and he just drew people to himself. And as he would say things or suggest things, he would get all of the friars just en masse would kind of follow, follow whatever he said. You know, they were just 
captivated by this extraordinary charismatic leader. But Francis was not, to use a modern lingo, he was not an organizer. He was not a detail man. He was not an administrator. Um, and so unlike Dominic, who before his death left for the Dominican order an extraordinarily complete and detailed set of constitutions and regulations that govern Dominican life such that when Dominic died, things just kind of continued without really missing a beat because everything was specified. Um, you know, after Francis's death, there was nothing like that. And there was a lot of disagreement about the direction the Franciscan order should go. Um, and as a result, there were factions, there was infighting, there were threats uh, that the order itself would, would split, which of course, down the road, it eventually did several times. So nowadays we have the, the OFMs and the OFM Capuchins and the Conventuals and the TOR, the Third Order Regulars, all Franciscan friars kind of from that original foundation. Um, but at the time, there was just a lot of this debating and most of it was about poverty. That was really the critical issue for the Franciscans and some wanted to live and make mandatory for the friars a uh, poverty as radical as the one that Francis himself lived. And there was a whole nother faction that thought that, you know, that to the degree Francis did it was an extraordinary grace given to him particularly, but not the kind of thing you could ask all of the friars en masse to follow. And, and there was great internal debate, and again, a threat of, of a fracturing of the order. And that was the environment when Bonaventure was elected. And he came in and he was an extraordinary administrator and leader. He was able to talk to these various factions and hear their concerns and listen to them. And he had a gift for kind of bringing others into a common vision that, uh, and crafting kind of a, a middle way forward that wasn't what any of them exactly wanted, but was something that all of them could live with and could follow. And then taking that, and once he got that support, then completely redid all of the written, again, regulations and constitutions so that all of these things were specified and spelled out so that for future generations, they wouldn't have to say, oh, well, this guy said this and wanted this to happen, but they had it all in writing. Um, and so in that sense, uh, Bonaventure did a great good for the Franciscan order, which some could argue was the most influential order in the church all the way up until the time of the founding of the Jesuits. Dominicans might argue that a little bit, but the point is um, it, it's hard to um, overestimate how important the Franciscans were uh, in the transition from the Middle Ages up to the cusp of, of the, modern, the modern period. And in, in Bonaventure, I think we have someone we can invoke for our church and our world today. Because certainly, it seems to me, both within the church and in our wider culture, there are all kinds of factions and there are all kinds of dissension and all kinds of disagreement. And it seems as if the polarization is getting greater and greater, that those drifting in one direction are becoming more strident that way. Those drifting the other are becoming more strident that way. And moderate voices in the middle are becoming rarer and rarer to find. And yet it's exactly those moderate voices who can try to keep us together that are so desperately needed.
So this day, perhaps we can turn in a special way to St. Bonaventure, now our intercessor in heaven. Ask him to intercede for our church. Ask him to intercede for our culture. As Americans, ask him to intercede for our political system so that we might be able to work with one another, that we might be able to disagree civilly, always respecting the integrity of the other person, always speaking and acting in charity, and perhaps in doing so, begin to forge some kind of a middle way that can heal the divisions that plague us. We stand and bring our prayers and intentions to the throne of our Heavenly Father. We pray for our Holy Catholic Church throughout the world, especially Pope Francis and Archbishop Blair. We pray to the Lord. We pray for our country and our government at the federal, state, and local levels. We pray that those elected to public office might serve with integrity, with honesty, with wisdom and prudence and justice, we pray to the Lord. We pray for the Franciscan order throughout the world. We pray for the friars, the sisters, the poor Clare nuns, and all members of the Franciscan laity. We pray that they might be given growth in numbers and in holiness, we pray to the Lord. We pray for all those still impacted by the current pandemic. We pray for those who are ill, especially uh, in hospitals. Uh, we pray for those who are unemployed or underemployed, small business owners, medical workers and first responders, we pray for those suffering mentally from the many months of isolation and loneliness, for all those who need the assistance and the healing touch of Christ, we pray to the Lord. And for all those intentions we hold in the silence of our own hearts and carry with us in faith to this holy altar this evening. For all of these needs and for all of our faithful departed, we pray to the Lord. Amen. Heavenly Father, giver of everything that is truly good and true and beautiful, we thank you for the way you share your, your shower, your blessings upon us. And trusting Father in the power of your love and mercy, we bring you our prayers and make them through Christ our Lord. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you, fruit of the earth and work of human hands. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands, it will become our spiritual drink. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Amen. 
May the sacrifice which we gladly present on the feast day of blessed Bonaventure be pleasing to you, O God, for taught by him, we too give ourselves entirely to you in praise through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For as on the festival of St. Bonaventure you bid your church rejoice, so too you strengthen her by the example of his holy life, teach her by his words of preaching, and keep her safe in answer to his prayers. And so, with the company of angels and saints, we sing the hymn of your praise, as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and, once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins, do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith, we proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until he come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly, we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Leonard, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, 
thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be. We proclaim Christ crucified, Christ the power of God and the wisdom of God. I know many of you are regulars, but just for review, for communion, please come forward in a single file line up the center aisle, alternating pews here in the center section from front to back. After the center sections have gone, the side sections, please exit to the back, down the side aisle, across, and up the center aisle. Uh, those who are receiving on the tongue are requested to wait till the very end and come forward after everyone else has come. Thank you. body of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. Body of Christ. 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 The body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. The body of Christ. Body of Christ. Body of Christ. Amen. Body of Christ. 
body of Christ. Um. Body of Christ. The body of Christ. Mm -hmm. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Okay. The body of Christ. The body of Christ. Okay. The body of Christ. Okay. Body of Christ. 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 Amen. Body of Christ. 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 Amen. Body of Christ. Amen. Let us pray. Refreshed by heavenly food, we humbly implore you, O Lord, that attentive to the teaching of blessed Bonaventure, we may abide at all times in thanksgiving for the gifts we have received. 
through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. A couple brief things for those who are praying for our teenagers, uh, for their confirmation last Monday evening. It was a beautiful Mass, I think, and, and so thank you for your prayers, and please continue to pray for them as they uh, now uh, begin to live their apostleship uh, in our, our Catholic Church. Also, please pray for the six adults uh, who will be receiving sacraments this coming Sunday at our RCIA Mass, uh, four who will be baptized, confirmed in First Communion, and two others who are converts who will make their profession of faith and be confirmed and receive their First Communion. Uh, so thank, please uh, thank, pray for them uh, during these last days of preparation for them. And as always, if we could have about four or so volunteers uh, to help disinfect the pews after Mass, uh, we'd love to have you. Uh, just enter the sacristy through uh, the left-hand sacristy door there. Anyone uh, under the age of 60-ish is welcome to volunteer. And we conclude, as always, invoking our protector, St. Michael, the archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl about the world, seeking the ruin of souls. Amen.